Well, that turned out being a bigger job than I expected. Just popping in here because I realised I've lost some footage. So it's probably a little bit strange that we've started the video with the boot off the car and already partially dismantled. The boot on the Lanchester is held in by a couple of sets of hinges. There's the external chromed ones, which are very obvious to see, and then there's the two on the inside, which also serve to hold the boot lid up. The way that you're supposed to remove the boot lid is undo the three countersunk screws that hold the interior hinges in place on the boot lid, and undo the four bolts that hold on the exterior hinges. The four bolts for the exterior hinges live in the ash beam that runs on the panel between the rear screen and the boot lid. If you get inside the boot and look up, you can actually see where those are. If you don't know to look for them, they're very well hidden. Pat and I didn't know about those until after we took the boot lid off the car, so we opted to knock out the two brass pins that go through the exterior hinges on the boot lid. We did have to do this anyway because the hinges had been mistreated in the past. They were bent and they were a little bit misshapen, so we did need to address that anyway, but that's very much the difficult way to remove the boot lid on one of these cars. With that out of the way, let's get back into the video so you can see how we did the refurbishment of the boot lid. We're not repainting or restoring anything here, we're just basically making sure everything works and everything's together. Further down the line this car might get repainted, but for now at least Pat and I want to enjoy it with its 70 odd years of wear and tear on display. As long as it's nothing that's detrimental to the operation and safety of the car, we're just going to leave it alone. There were a lot of screws holding the aluminium lining on the boot lid in, about 70 or 80 of them. And the majority of them, this isn't all of them, it's just a handful, the majority did actually come out without too much trouble. It looks like originally they were chromed and they're steel, but the heads had rusted up. Quite a few of the heads had gone quite soft and, well, I had to draw them out, which is never ideal. There had been something rattling around in the boot and I didn't know what it was. It turned out it was this, which as you can see it's been chopped off and I think that was the bolt holes for a number plate not the one on the car because the one on the car is held in with three screws from the outside so whatever this was if it was this was bolted on and done that way bit of a puzzle as is Whatever these things are, I think they might be cocoons or nests or something, no idea. But we do now know that the inside of the boot lid is in pretty good shape. These boot lids are made with a wooden frame, which is these pieces here that you can see. And there is a steel section around here, which is tacked onto the wooden frame. And then the main piece that you see, the bodywork, is aluminium, and that's turned over the edge. That piece is the lining for the boot, which is screwed in place. And unfortunately, in the process of drilling it out, it has damaged the edge a little bit. Not much could be done, as I was going through the steel head of the screws, as it got closer to being free, the drill just kept skipping off and going through the aluminium. So. Just one of those things, unfortunately. I'm going to straighten all that out as best I can and deal with that puncture hole there. The other thing is now I know where the wiring runs on the boot lid and we could have done it without taking the lining off but it would have been difficult. It goes through the little grommet there, the little hole at the top. And on the actual boot lid, that would then come in through here inside the boot lid and there's a hole in this cross beam, just there, to guide the wiring down to where the latch is. There's another hole just here, and then it pops out through here 
the number plate light. So it must be one of the first items that they put in before this inner skin goes on. And the only way to really root it properly is to take that inner skin off. There's also a staple here which will hold the wire down to the centre. I'm going to give everything a good clean. There aren't many opportunities to do a job like this, so clean all the detritus out and do my best to repair that. And we'll either screw that panel back on or we'll use a modern adhesive. We haven't decided yet. All cleaned up. Not looking too bad. These things at the top, um, Pat and I had a bit of a think about where there is some very old moth damage in the car. There's been no signs of moths in the car since we got it and we do have cedar blocks in there which is helping keeping them away. But the worst of the moth damage is on the parcel shelf on the uh, driver's side which is the same side of this and we're wondering if this was actually some moths that were in here a long time ago. The cocoons, we presume they are, are long since vacated so maybe that's what that was. We don't really know, we're just guessing. The aluminium edge on this actually knocks out fairly well. It's as close to perfect as it needs to be. I also spent some time with this, which was a hole. It's now a bit of a bump instead of a hole, but I'd rather a dent than a great big hole in the thing. The aluminium's stretched quite a bit there, and I don't have the tools and skill to do... Well, I don't have the tools and skill to make a better job than I've done. Before I can fit the wiring in the back of this, I've got to get all the old screws out. I had to drill a lot of the heads off, because they'd gone soft and just chewed up. So I have these little stubs left, just need to unscrew. This will take a while. Sometimes they just snap. Annoyingly, a few snapped ones, but overall, these came out surprisingly well. I think the screws I've bought though might be a little bit short, we'll find out. That means all of the framework is now cleaned up, and I'll have enough of the screw holes free that I can put the aluminium panel back on. This wire that's in here isn't the right one. I'm still not sure what this wire's for, this came with a new harness, and I, I genuinely don't have any idea. So I bought some new wire, which I know is correct, the right colours, all that sort of business. But I've got to undo those bolts there to get the number plate light off, so I can thread the new wiring through properly. Because I know this needs two wires, one for earth and one for live, I picked up twin core PVC wiring. It's not braided like the rest of the wiring harness, but most of this is completely hidden. So I didn't think the extra expense was really worth it. Also, this comes in its own sheath, which means it's a lot tidier and a lot easier to install. First job was to just put a grommet in there. There wasn't one before, the wires just went through. Might have been one once upon a time. I don't know. The other thing is if you leave these wires in the sheath, it won't go through that hole. So I've just stripped it back so I have the two bare wires. This will probably make wiring up the light socket itself a bit easier. 
It's a tight fit, but not too tight. Nice and tidy. There are already holes pre-drilled in the frame of the boot itself, which guide the cable through. And then it comes through the aluminium lining that I'll be screwing back in here. Depending on where they've actually drilled this hole for you, as I understand it, this isn't standard fitment. It depended on the dealership you were buying the car from, I think. Don't know for certain. But on ours, the hole is the, the hole in the frame is there, and the hole in the car is here. So you just have to thread it underneath that bit. staple here that used to hold the wiring before. I'm not going to worry about that because of the way this all holds in place. I don't think it's necessary. I think there's a bit belt and braces. Right, and then the reason this is so long is this has to go up to the bottom of the windscreen, across the car, and then down the inner wings. So you do need quite a bit. Hopefully I've got enough. But this will then join up, the red wire will go to the side light circuit, and the black will just go to an earth point. And then we should have a working boot light. seconds on this one. An 8mm is too small and a 9mm is too big, so it's slap bang in the middle. Still can't get my head around imperial fractions. I will. Before we put this trim on, I'm going to make sure that the light unit's wired up properly. That means turning everything over. There's some things on this car that are not what I'm used to at all. And one of them is these wiring connectors. And I had a bit of a job finding these because I don't actually know what they're called. I did think they were bootlace connectors, but they're a different thing. I'll put the information on the screen where I got them, and what they have them listed as. So if you're after some of these, that's where to get some. These ones, as it happened, were already in this unit. So they fit and all the rest fit. And what you do is you strip the end of the plastic off the wire, and then poke the wires through a hole in the top. And you bend the wires down over the thing to hold it in place. And that's it. You can, if you want to, solder on the end of here. I'm going to try it this way and see how it goes. If it works, it works. You just plug them in. And there we go. There's not a lot of space to work with at this end, so it's a bit of a battle getting all of these wires lined up. Pretty sure that's the correct way around. I'm not sure it makes a lot of difference when it's just the bulb. Pop the cover on, and then we'll see about putting the interior trim on. A whole string of broken screws there, that's why I can't put anything in those. <laughs> I have to draw those out. And 
some of these aren't great. Some of them are. We'll go back and anywhere I can't get screws in, I'll re-drill. Anywhere they're a little bit loose, I can repack the matchstick, or I can drill in a slightly different place. There's a lot of them though. So let's see what goes in. I bought a box of a hundred and I'm hoping there's going to be enough. Ow, not sure what's going on with that one. Oh, there's probably a broken screw in the bottom of it. Same with that one. Oh, we'll drill those out. As best we can. That's almost finished. There's nine screws I need to drill out. I might get some slightly longer screws. I think they're going to bite slightly better than the ones I've got. And we're not sure, but we think there should be a trim panel on this piece here. There's some extra holes that don't actually go into any framework underneath. But we don't know what should be there. We don't know what used to be there. We imagine there's probably a piece of black millboard with this latch mechanism here exposed that just sort of slides on from the top and then screws down to the aluminium because it seems a bit odd that that section there would be exposed if there was a trim there that you could remove easily you can get to the wiring for the light you can get to the mechanism for the lock so if you needed to do any service work there you can once I've drilled these screw holes out and got some screws in them this is then ready to go back on the car, which will be great because it's a faff. It's always in the way. I've been going around and replacing all of the screws around this edge. I've got two that I need to drill out up here because the old screws have broken off inside the frame, so I need to drill that out. And I've taken this big pile of screws out, which took forever. The reason being, some of them just weren't biting as much as I'd like, so I picked up some longer ones, and now everything's nice and snug. So I'm very happy about that. I'm still figuring out how to do this panel here that's missing. I've got a couple of ideas, so I'm going to give that a go before we put this on the car. And we're very close to having this back in place. It's all wired up, which is great. Another bit of lighting that I should be able to test if everything goes to plan. Decided on a method that worked. This is just hardboard. I would have preferred some black millboard, but I don't have any. So I'm going to spray this black. Pat had some ideas for improving this as well. I think originally this must have been a pressed steel piece or something like that, so it clears the lock mechanism. Which is why we've got this funny shape in the middle of it where it's cut out. This will do for now, it's going to stop things going in the boot lid and just tidies it up a bit. But eventually, we'll come back and revise this, do a better job later. Amazing what a bit of black paint will do, that blends in much better. The other thing I did was I took the hinge pins and rather than replace them, I've just filed the burr off one end and just chamfered them so they should go in a bit easier and we're ready to put the boot lid back on. Pat and I didn't film it, it was awkward to set the camera angles up and everything. We got the hinge pins back in, beveling them helped a lot. We also used some AC50 just to help lubricate things. This side was a little bit awkward, it didn't want to line up, but eventually we unbolted this from inside the car and then sort of lined up the two halves off the car and bolted everything back together and that worked great. The first time since we've got the car, these pins don't stick out anymore, they're nice and flush now. Rear lights are all wired up and ready to go, as is the number plate light there. I 
and the boot lid opens like it should. One thing we did learn is when we were putting this back in, these are not the correct fixings. The holes that they go into are countersunk. So instead of these bolts, it should be these sorts of screws we think, um, which are the fixings used on the rest of the car. So presumably somebody's had the boot lid off before and these got damaged or lost. There were hints that this boot lid's been off before uh, somebody had been in for the wiring, the hinge pins weren't great. So, you know, there's been work. The wiring for the boot now goes out there, like it should, into the frame underneath there, and then will eventually be wired up in this corner with everything else. The trim panel is fine, you can't see it. Uh, almost feels like a waste of time to do it, but it's nice that it's done, it tidies up a big hole. With the boot lid all back together, that's another big job off the list. This ended up being a much larger project than I was expecting. Having to replace all the fixings and do the wiring and all that. Yeah, but it's done now. One thing out of the way. It's not the best design though. Um, I know this is normal for the period, but it's horrible. Like trying to get in to do anything, it's just, you're always banging your head. And then to keep it up, of course, you've got to hold the boot lid and pull this lever out, and that holds it in place. And then to shut it, it's even better. You've got to push this without trapping your fingers. Terrible. But also normal. <laughs>